This time on Pedalbox, we're finally paying some more attention to the front of the car and getting rid of some more bits off our 10% list. So as you can see, we've taken a lot of stuff off the front of the car, and that seems counterintuitive because the only thing on the list for the front of the car, on this 10% uh, list, which was on uh, this side, is to fit the, the front bumper bar, which obviously we can't do because we took all of the things off the front of the car. But we did do that with some good reason. These mounts across here, we've butchered them and hacked them when we were building the mounts for the brackets, uh, mounts for the hinges rather, that hold the bonnet on. And we want to put the bonnet on, so we want to get the hinges on. And generally, all of this section needed some tidying up. So we're going to do that, or rather we have done that, which is why I'm already covered in black paint. And this has had a new coat of paint on it as well. So all of these parts are going to go back on once the paint has dried. And then we're going to be able to fit the blank, or at least the rough piece, for our splitter, which is this piece of um, resin impregnated uh, nine mil ply, which I've actually forgotten the proper name for it, which is a little bit annoying. I'm sure that it will come to me when I'm off camera. Um, and this needs to go back on the car and then get shaped so that it doesn't protrude too far forward from the bodywork. Not to mention these sharp corners that sit obviously right on the, on the edges of it keep hitting my ankles and I'm getting bored of it. So I want them rounded and finished as soon as possible. So with that, let's put all of the front end back together, fit this and start working out the shape. So with the splitter loosely attached, because it's going to end up coming off again, we don't want to gun it so hard and uh, have the um, riv nuts pop and have to refit those, we can use a square and work out where the front of the bodywork comes to on the inside edge of here. And it looks like it's basically along that one. So it's not a bad guess we put in before. Uh, just move that along there. And that is just about 50 mil. Now, 50 mil isn't particularly big for a splitter coming out the front of the car, but obviously we don't have a big air dam down here. We're scooping through, going up into the radiator and out. So this much will actually work quite nicely for us. But as we get out to this back edge here, where it actually cuts underneath the bumper somewhat, we can probably go a little bit further and maybe try for with maybe three inches here. I mean, what does three inches come out at? So... That is four, that is three, and we can probably go for more like four inches at the edge. So we'll cut it a little bit big and we can always slice it down afterwards to be a little bit smaller. So we'll get this marked out and then chop down. Well, that's fit back on, and I'm pretty happy with how that looks, although Chris points out that maybe we should get rid of a little bit more on these corners, just where it sticks out quite so far. I'm not sure. We'll um, probably think about it for a little while and come back to it, but this is now at least not going to take my ankles out when we put it back on the floor. And other than that, it looks really good. <laughs> Now with the splitter on, we can move on to something a little bit more interesting, and that is the grill. And that's gonna deal with this massive void in the front of the car. Uh, as much as it, it looks very good and it works, it's not really, no. It's not that it looks good, it's that it's fit for purpose. So with the splitter on, the sides mounted, and all of that finalized, we can move on to something more interesting, and that is the grill. 
and the grill is going to go obviously in the very front and I've cut down some inch box section into some half inch angle iron pieces because we can only get three mil angle iron uh, and frankly that's a little bit heavy for being right out on the front when we can use one and a half mil wall box section and just cut it to suit so that's much much more useful. Now you'll notice that this one a little bit short this is actually the top piece but these three pieces that are welded together will fit really really nicely so they fit in between the two bottom sections of these air curtain units and then these are going to be bent in slightly so they go up behind these edges because at the moment if we had a big square one we wouldn't quite be able to fit it in all that easily so we're going to just shape this a little bit more and this is the grill that we're going to put in it now it's going to look a little bit weird at the moment uh, just because it's sat very much in front of the car but basically, this plastic grill is going to have a metal framework around it and it's just going to drop in and have four bolts that hold it in place. So it should make it nice and easy. And this tab, uh, sorry, the angle iron is big enough that we can just notch it over at the back and it will clamp this in once we've got all four sides on and this won't be able to come out of this frame. So that should solve a bunch of different problems of how to mount the grill. Here is our grill piece. Now to fit this in, it just slides in across the bottom. As you can see, we actually made it fit now. And then it tucks up inside there. So that works really nicely. Now we just have to cut this down to fit it with the angled uh, sides and to make it the right height. And that fortunately is fairly easy because this is just plastic. Now we've obviously already cut this panel down to fit at the very bottom. So now we have our template and we can just whiz all the bits off and drop it straight in. And here is the finished grill, or at least the finished build of the grill. We've um, fit this into the back and once again, we can just slide this in under here, lift it up through there. It's actually quite difficult without getting in the way of the camera. Please hold. That's a bit harsh, you starting on the last verse. Well, I figured it wouldn't take you long. Yeah. Right, that's what it should look like. And it goes in a lot easier when you're not all the way at the end trying to put that end in. But I think that looks pretty good. We might end up curving it slightly and it will look a lot different once the bonnet is on as well so the bonnet's going to go on tomorrow because it is coming to the end of today so we're going to sort all of this out and sort mounting it tomorrow but that is actually just four little tabs that go in a couple of riv nuts and it's good now while Aid's been working on the grill, I've had a crack at doing our uh, one job per episode on the dashboard here. We're determined to not like let this fall out of our brains and leave it languish like a few other things have. So this time I've been welding up a bit more of the, under the structure underneath, making sure that it's now fully coupled into the body in all the places it needs to be, which means finally it's ready to paint. So we've got a nice layer of black paint over it. So now if we had the foam, we could skin it and this would be pretty much good to go. Wrapping up this weekend's work on the dashboard, let's just get that out of the way for you. 
I've radiused under all these, so I've put some more pieces of quarter pipe all the way across here, much like we had on the left, boxed in around the front of the gear shifter. So that now fits in like that. And I've also cut a great big hole out of the plate in the front here that we can put our low mount air vent into. Now hopefully if the driver's arms are rubber bandy enough, which I think mine are, they should be able to operate the adjuster on here to open and close the air even while they're driving. Well, maybe not while they're driving, but certainly while they're in the car, which should be important, especially with how open all of this is, being able to get some warm air into our feet at least, which is a nice sealed area and should warm us from underneath, I think is going to be really important when we're driving this thing out to tracks. So now that we're done welding and I'm not going to melt anything, I'm going to pop the air vents back in. I'm going to pretend we've got the top skin on, so I'm going to try and do it properly the way we would if we were really building it. So can you chuck us the 8 mil, please, Ed? Tap. Oh, okay, you're not, <laughs> you're not playing by the rules. <laughs> That's actually not that hard to get to. Yeah, if we pop the, pop the stereo out, it's a piece of cake. And now, back to the grill. Well, now that Ed's finished with the grill frame, it's actually looking pretty good for the most part. It's a friction fit holding it pretty well in place around most of the corners. So the bottom corners out here, the grill holds itself nice and snug, but we do have a couple of spots where we just need to retain it a little bit. So I'm going to get a little clamp around it and that just, uh, holds it all together. And then while it's held, I'm going to cheat with a couple of dabs of black silicon. This probably isn't a good long-term solution, but it will hold it in well enough. And if it falls out of that, obviously we can go to something a bit better. And the last of this episode side quests is sorting out some of the dips in the bonnet. Now, when we'd welded the whole thing together, I think I'd managed to do a pretty poor job of heat control in my weld. And one side, can't remember which one it was, I think it was this one, warped way, way more than the other sides. So we've had to fill it back up quite a lot with filler to get it back up to the same sort of shape on both sides. Now, normally this wouldn't matter too much, but we think that the radiator outlet in the middle here is a little bit too big. It looks kind of like a maw coming up at the top of the car. So what we've decided is to put an extra little plate over here, just sort of extending the front of the bonnet up a little bit further. And that means that we have to have a relatively nice continuous line across and over the bonnet, which meant that these sides had to match. Otherwise, it would look really, really goofy when you connect it all. So I've been spending a whole bunch of time filling and sanding and filling and sanding, building all of this up. And I think we've got a pretty good result now. So we're going to remount the bonnet now that we're all done working on it. And uh, that's a whole barrel of fun. So let's, uh, let's get cracking on that. Now, hands down, the smartest thing we've done with this bonnet is for ease of installation, we've put studs on the mounting faces. So when we want to put it on the car, I actually can't look through anymore because we've put the bar in the way. I used to put my head through and just look down at where the studs went. So if you could just steer, uh, guide it home, please, Aid. And with that, another episode of Pedalbox draws to a close. It's been another busy weekend here at headquarters, and I think now that we've got the car back on the ground with the grill in, with the bonnet reshaped, it's looking better than ever. So all in all, pretty successful, I reckon. Now, if you want to support us in our lunacy here, you can jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy any of the snazzy merch that, as usual, I am not wearing for you to, for you to see. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and set up a recurring support for us every month. Anything over a dollar a month is available on there. We appreciate absolutely everything. All the money that we get sent does go into this at the minute. So this is really, really helpful to us. And uh, I think that's everything as far as me shilling stuff. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe the videos. Ring the bell so you get notifications when new stuff comes out. And that's it. We'll see you next time.